Last thing I want to encourage us to do is those of you who are believers, um, one of the ways that I personally try to control this area of my life is I made a list. I made a list of everything that I will lose if I, if I commit adultery. Uh, I got this from a mentor of mine, Cody Whitful. He said that uh, sex with the most beautiful woman in the world for 30 minutes isn't worth the lifetime consequences that it'll produce for the life of a pastor or any life. So here's my list. List number one, it would cause untold, untold hurt to Audra, and I would lose her respect. It would confuse plays. He would spend... He would spend the rest of his life wondering why his dad traded in something so good for something so cheap. It would shame this church that I love and given my life to. It would shame my parents. It would shame the gospel, invite scorn and disgrace from the enemies of the Christian faith. I would become another statistic of pastors who have lost their ministries to moral failure. I would... Uh, Bring untold shame to the woman on whom I committed this act. And most importantly, I would have to give an account someday to my Lord and Savior and say, why is it that after all I had given you, you decided to trade it in for something cheap? So you make a list. You can see how powerful that is of what you would lose if you commit adultery. Other thing you can do, men, is to put up some guardrails. Guardrails are systems designed to keep you from going into off-limit areas. So you put up sexual guardrails. The off-limit area in sex is having sex outside of marriage, so you put up some guardrails. So in my world, if, if I do, then Audra knows about it, but I don't meet with women alone. I don't eat with women alone. I certainly don't counsel women alone. You say, Wes, is that radical? Yeah, it's kind of radical, but I promise you, you will not regret putting up those guardrails. It may seem radical, but it brings rich dividends down the road. Uh, the guardrails you can put up, maybe you put a filter on your internet. If you're recently divorced, you came out of a bad relationship, maybe you shouldn't date anybody for 12 months until you get your heart right. If you feel your heart drifting towards someone that you know it shouldn't drift, then you need to tell somebody who's safe. And your wife may not be the safe party, so maybe don't tell her but you tell somebody that you can trust. My heart's drifting. What can I do? Uh, there's guardrails that women you can put up is dressing modestly. You call it dressing for spiritual success. I don't know what that means in your world, but I would invite you to invite your mom or your dad to say, how can I dress so that I set myself up for success in this area? Maybe you shouldn't even ask your mom and dad. Maybe you should ask your grandma because your, <laughs> your grandma will probably tell you what you need to hear. Uh, but dress for spiritual success. Uh, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6, flee from sexual immorality. When he says flee from sexual immorality, that doesn't mean get as close to the line as you can. <laughs> That's not what that word means. It means the question isn't what's permissible. The question is what best promotes purity. So you don't dance on the line. You say, what can I put in my life so that I'm pure, so that I don't get as close to the edge as I can, but I get as far as away as I can from sexual immorality. The reason that people fall into sexual sin isn't because they want to. That's never the reason. The reason is because they get too close to the opportunities. So if you're dating somebody, one of the rules that you can do is keep all four feet on the floor during your date. Don't do your devotionals in the bed, you know. <laughs> That's not smart. Uh, keep all four feet on the ground. You say, Wes, that's radical, that's prudish. It may be radical, but I can promise you, you'll never regret it. Other things you can do if you are a business person, never travel alone with a member of the opposite sex. If you're a, if you're a business owner and you send your employees out on an overnight trip with, with two people who are not the same sex, then shame on you if you're a Christian. You're, just, you're playing with fire. You're setting them up for disaster. Put up some guardrails in your life so that you don't tempt yourself to do something dumb. And